Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's podcast. We are the Feels Good Podcast. I am Jacqueline Fernandez, and... I am Amanda Cerny. But moving on, Amanda. (laughs) We have an amazing guest with us today that you are sure to know and love. Having starred in favorites such as School of Rock, Nickelodeon sitcom, sitcom iCarly, Drake and Josh, which I used to watch literally like every day of my life. Margo in Despicable Me and in 2020 hosting Mission Unstoppable with Miranda Cosgrove. She is also no stranger to the music world, releasing iCarly, About You, Sparks Fly, High Maintenance, and Dancing Crazy. Please welcome my dear friend, Miranda Cosgrove. Miranda! Hi. <laughs> that was a really nice intro thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a humble one. You've done so much. You're so freaking awesome. You're so smart. I've watched some of those episodes of Mission Unstoppable, so I have a lot to learn from you. Blowing my yeah. mind. So that's where you do like um, science, just learning. Every- You're like a Bill Nye, but like even cooler than a Bill Nye. Bill Nye, the science guy. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> Goals. Because <laughs> honestly, I know nothing about science at all. So wow. getting to do it, it's like, it's fun getting to learn new stuff. Like maybe that's how you guys feel when you're doing the podcast. Like- it really is. Because everybody we talk to teaches us something. We learn so much. Like mm-hmm. just hearing somebody's story you learn so much of just what their process is and even from their story you just learn life lessons with every single person's story it's so true and Mm Rhonda it's like we're so inspired by you as well like you start at what age again um I started acting when I was three in like a really weird I mean I didn't really act but when I was three I was I was at like a (laughs) like a food festival with my mom and an agent like came up to my mom because I'm from LA. So it was just really random. And I ended up going on some auditions. I think I was in like a Kmart ad (laughs) and a Burger King commercial (laughs) and stuff like that. And then I just kept doing it, um, like going on auditions, like randomly when I was little and ended up um, acting or ended up getting parts in acting. It's kind of weird. (laughs) (laughs) So humble. But I think... When you're three, did you realize, like, did you see the ads and were you excited or did you see the ads and you were like, huh, where's my toys? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really remember being that little, but I remember yeah. um, when I was like eight and I was on the show Drake and Josh on Nickelodeon, like I remember going to school because I went to public school and um, like nobody, no. I had like, two friends and like nobody cared about me at all and then when that came out like all of a sudden all these kids at school were like excited about it and were like coming up to me at recess and stuff and I remember that happening and you're like yeah did did you accept them as friends or were you just like "Mm, no no I think I was like really excited about it which is kind of sad yeah, like, what does that like, do to cool. you as a kid? Like, I mean, like, when all of a sudden you've just become super popular and, like, you know, like, everyone kind of, like, wants to, like, be your friend. Like, what does that do to you? Like, I know, like, you were super excited, but, like, after some time, did you come to understand? Like, did it make you think about things differently? Um, Maybe a little bit. I mean, <laughs> I remember there was this kid in elementary school named Curtis Phillips <laughs> who I was madly in love with. And he didn't really know I existed. And then he ended up liking Drake and Josh. And he asked me to go to the movies. Oh. <laughs> it was really big in fifth grade. <laughs> um, but then there was a whole drama because he actually liked another girl more. And he only liked me because of the show. <laughs> so it was, oh. it was a whole like elementary school drama. <laughs> so he wanted the best of both worlds. He wanted yeah. the clout and the, you know, he missed out. That guy missed yeah. out. Curtis, if you're watching this now, no, Miranda will not date you. She will not take you back. <laughs> I actually One chance. dated him recently. And he's Did you? Scared. No, Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking at past options. It's gotten to that point. <laughs> because of COVID. <laughs> Speaking so- of... Because you definitely can't go out. I mean, it's not a laughing matter. Miranda actually has COVID, and um, but you're feeling okay. You've had headaches, or like, what were you, like your s- symptoms? How did you know to go get tested? Yeah, um, I actually I 
I tested because I worked one day and then I tested negative and then I actually wasn't feeling that bad, but maybe a week after I tested negative, I tested again. It wasn't really because I wasn't feeling well as much as I just kind of test once <laughs> every couple of weeks or once a week to make sure because my parents are older. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was really surprised when it came out positive. Yeah. I had a headache a little bit the day I got the results and, um, I don't really get headaches a lot and it was, it hurt. It was a pretty bad one. So, um, I thought that was kind of strange, but for some reason COVID didn't cross my mind. I'm not sure why. Um, maybe I was in denial a little bit, but then when it, it came up and said positive, I was really surprised. And then I just had the headache for a few days and I lost my taste and smell. Um, and I still don't have my taste or smell back, but other than that, I really don't have any symptoms. Um, oh, no. so crazy. And for Thanksgiving too, you couldn't eat anything or oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did you have for Thanksgiving? <laughs> um, I actually have it's weird. I've been eating more. You'd think that I'd eat less because you can't really yeah. taste anything, but I've been eating more because, um, I keep thinking if I keep trying different things, eventually something will taste like itself again. So I just keep trying all this stuff. Um, and so far it's kind of strange cause it's like salt. You can actually taste salty things a little bit. I don't know if everyone's like that, but you can mm -hmm. taste really basic stuff. Oh my God, I can't believe you actually like lose your, like they say like that's the first thing, like in, if, if you feel, if you haven't been tested, but like all of a sudden you've lost your taste and your smell, that means you have it and I can't, like, so, so what are you actually, are you on any, any medication or something right now? No, I got really lucky or I've been really lucky so far because I haven't had a cough or any breathing problems. I've only had the sort of a migraine and not anymore and just the taste and smell but it is really strange because you know if i'm doing laundry or literally anything i can't smell anything it's just strange to not be able to but i'm really lucky compared to a lot of people obviously yeah have COVID. yeah when people, people get it really bad when people text you to hang out um or to like <laughs> do stuff <laughs> do you just say hey i have covid and what's their reaction <laughs> Are they um, more concerned first, about? <laughs> concerned about it. When, <laughs> like, when I first got it, I was kind of, I'm not even going to lie, I was kind of embarrassed to tell people because you have to contact anyone you've been around. I think it was within like a week before you get the, the positive result. Mm -hmm. So just contacting people was horrible because obviously everyone's panicking and nobody wants to get it. And then having to just text people and be like, I'm positive is yeah. <laughs> not the most fun experience. But um, I also got really lucky because nobody I've texted ended up testing positive too. So I wasn't able to figure out exactly how I got it. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of kind of, I hurt my ankle. I, I'm really klutzy and I sprained my ankle and I went to do an x-ray. So I was thinking it's possible. Maybe I got it when I went to do the x-ray at the doctor's office, but everyone was wearing masks and stuff. So I don't know. Yeah, but they say actually the hospital is one of the most common places to get it. Mm -hmm. Like going there and yeah. And even just people getting tested over there. It's like, even if you're negative, you could turn up positive. So it almost is like not even a good idea to be at any kind of hospital right now. Oh no, yeah. that's terrible. But I guess also because you're working, like we're all working, we're out and about. Um, we have like so much higher, like our chances are so much higher getting it than like other people. I mean, if you're not like working as much, like we're working, I mean, I want to set if like 200 people every day. We have, we have restrictions on sets of like how many, yeah how many people can be in like a room, but everywhere is different. I think every city, every state, every country has different protocols because their number, everybody's numbers are different, you know? Yeah. Um, but that, yeah, on ours, I remember I had a shoot and there was only a certain, there was only like, I forget how many, like 10 people or something. And it, it is very, very restrictive. But when you were shooting in that place, Amanda, like up in the mountains, there was pretty much no COVID there. So our sets were like a little bit like, you know, like yeah. the team was a little bit bigger and we were more free. But towards the last week, they had to do a night curfew because they're like, oh my God, it's getting really bad right now. <laughs> like COVID was just spreading yeah. even in that area. So yeah, yeah, I feel like that's the process. It's like a roller coaster. It's like things get better and then things let up and then things get bad and then things tighten up. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. And I think we're just waiting for that 2021 where hopefully it'll be the year of the vaccine. 
and yeah. everyone will be free of this. But I, I think you've been really responsible throughout the process of it, of getting tested, of notifying everybody and yeah. not like stay hermiting in your own like self quarantine and everything too. What has that been like just being home? Like you, you have your cats and your dogs, right? Cats. Um, well, <laughs> today is day 10 of since I got the positive result. And um, I'm not gonna lie, I was super excited to talk to you guys. <laughs> like more excited even than I normally would be. Because <laughs> this is definitely the most exciting thing I have done in a long time. Oh, um, 10 days off. So, yeah, I've just been watching a lot of shows and, um, you know, kind of just hanging out. I do, my, I have a lot of animals and since I was fostering the pugs, I um, have a lot to do at least. Like it's nice to have a lot of animals around because it, it's keeping me busy. Oh yeah. Definitely. Oh, they're, they're loving it. They're like, yes, mom is home. Yeah. <laughs> Get all the cuddles. Well, to help yeah. you feel good today, because that's our goal of our whole podcast, we're going to spit out some random facts for you so we can all learn a little something new. A study conducted through dating sites suggests that women posting their photo get double the emails than do those who don't. The same study says that men who posted their annual income to be $250,000 or more get 156% more emails than those who don't state their income at all. Sounds wow. legit. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I Girls are believe after it. Rich, wonderful <laughs> world. <laughs> I wonder when this Wait, study so when was posting done. their photos get double the emails and those who don't. Well, yeah, I guess. And men who post their income. Wow. It's not, a, really, you guys it's not use, a superficial world at all. Do you guys use any dating sites? I have a boyfriend, so I haven't really been on many, but I know both of you are single and ready to mingle. So <laughs> yeah, but how do we do that? How do we thing? actually get on a dating site? Like, Miranda, I don't know about you, but like, if I went on a dating site here... First of all, I don't think people would believe that that's me, <laughs> like actually me. They'll be like, oh yeah, right. You're not, this isn't, you know. They don't think you're trying to catfish them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're trying no, to I trick don't them. Think I would get, yeah, I think I'd actually get rejected more than like accepted. And I'd be like, no, actually it's me. It's me trying to find a date. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to do that though. But I actually, I've heard that there are celebrity dating sites, by the way. I don't know if you guys know this. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. on one of those kind of. I guess it's kind of like a celebrity dating thing. It's called Raya, and it's like a a dating yes. app. I'm on it's that. Called, are you on it? Yes. <laughs> no way. <laughs> like, All the guys are downloading yeah. Raya right now. They're just. I don't. <laughs> Like, I think, I think it's so, I mean, it makes so much sense. So many people must be on all those different sites and there's different sites for different niches of what people are into or looking for. So it's, it's super helpful in times like these when people cannot like meet people. There's you're not going to bars, really. You're not like going and to the skating rink. I don't know what, what do people do? And then <laughs> meeting people. So it's like, movies. yeah, <laughs> I don't know what age group you'll meet there, but I don't know. <laughs> so, but it yeah. doesn't have, um, like, a exclusive oh. dating site. Well, in India, I mean, there's Tinder, right? Oh yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But that's so like, yeah. So it's so, like, I mean, like, I know that Tinder is pretty big here. Um, mm -hmm. And I think Bumble, is it Bumble mm -hmm. as well? Yes. Bumble is pretty big as well, but I'm pretty sure there's like so many more dating apps as well because people are actually getting pretty used to it now. I know quite a lot of people, you know, who aren't like, I mean, you know, who aren't actors or whatever, not from the film industry. And they're like on Tinder all the time over here. And even when we're traveling, they hook up on their you know, their, their Tinder there. And I, I sometimes get a little bit jealous. I'm like, that's kind of cool. You could just randomly meet someone and then just like, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. like, or even if when you're traveling, imagine just meeting someone who'll be like, Hey, yeah, I'm a local and I'll take you around and even meet like friends that way and stuff. So I kind of feel sometimes like I'm missing out. I don't know. I, Obviously cause <laughs> you're seeing someone. Yeah. So I'm like, I, yeah, I've actually, I've always been in relationships. I've never really used like dating apps, but, um, yeah. 
If I totally would if I wasn't though. Like I it would be so much fun. You can just You've go never been on a dating app ever? Never. I've never wow. been on one. I've and never I, been on one. But I I wish I was at some point in my life before I found somebody. I'm getting yeah, in so much like trouble for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I don't know. I just think it's when I remember being in high school and I was like, I wish there was, there was just so many cute boys in this town in Jupiter and I was in another town and I was like, I wish I could just see like photos of all of them and just like decide like, okay, that guy's cool. Cause I would just see them all on the beach and I would never go up to them. So like a dating app would have been a great solution even then. You, <laughs> so. you invented dating apps even before it was invented. You invented it in your head. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. knew it'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, what was, um, do you have any weird experiences from dating apps that you're comfortable um, well, sharing? It's kind of awkward because all the opening lines, like 90% of the opening lines are COVID related now. <laughs> so, oh. Like COVID humor, like <gasps> really oh. bad. There's not a lot to work with. <laughs> it's not really the funniest subject, but I feel yeah. like everyone starts with that. Like people always are like, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the main thing you can say, but it's always like, how are you holding up in the times of COVID? Or like, <laughs> and then oh. Miranda, Miranda logs off. It's like the Simpsons yeah. meme that just <laughs> backs <on>. up. <laughs> Before it was like, and now it's awkward too, because I haven't really, obviously I haven't been on the dating app very much. Like, or obviously I haven't gone out with anyone on the dating app since I got COVID, but it is sort of funny now because it's like, should, I always think, should I tell people like these people I've never met before? Should I be like, well, actually I have it. <laughs> like, what do I Hi. <laughs> Here, here's an icebreaker. Here's an nice icebreaker. <laughs> yeah. I have COVID. <laughs> I'm COVID positive. And I you know what that. though? If somebody told me that like up front, I'd be like, this person like is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like they opened up <laughs> with like an honest, like a fact about them that could steer me away. But, <laughs> but that's not, it's so funny because it's like, obviously like people quarantine and it doesn't stay with you forever. At least what we know, you know, it doesn't stay with you forever. So it's not like, <laughs> it's not like, like um, positive for life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, it's like, all right, I'll wait like a month. And then if you're good and tested, we'll hang yes. out maybe if the mayor lets us you know <laughs> this is like a bad rom-com already like <laughs> you meet someone oh and you go for a month straight you I've been, I feel like so COVID. many films so many films are gonna happen like covid based films <laughs> like by next year like you I said all. like the rom-coms the horrors I like only want to watch, I will only watch stories based off of Miranda's life. <laughs> it's not going to be fun for you. It's not going to be exciting. <laughs> that's all I want. Every story I get, I love it so much. I think it's, just, it's so, it's so just honest and comedic and like just awesome and temporary. That's why it's, it can be comedic. Um, <laughs> but moving on. So did you know on February 1st, 2009, Comcast accidentally aired 30 seconds, 37 seconds of oh porn my God. during Super Bowl <laughs> Cardinals and the Steelers, Steeler Nation, woohoo, <laughs> clashed during the intense final minutes of the Super Bowl game. With just three minutes remaining, the Cardinals had just taken the lead. And after facing almost certain defeat, the broadcast made a switch to an initially innocent enough scene, which many no doubt mistook as a commercial. What came next, however, was certainly unexpected. As the scene played out, a woman was visibly grabbing the man in the genital area while trying to unzip his pants. And then within mere seconds, the man stood up to remove his pants, revealing full male nudity on live television. Watch out, Janet. 37 oh, seconds of Club Jenna aired until Comcast was able to stop the production and get back to business of football. Hmm. Wow. That's hey, the, so why did it happen? I don't know. That's all we got. That's all the information we have. <laughs> this is 2009. <laughs> yeah, oh so, my God. Um, uh, They're I, so lucky there was no social media then. <laughs> like there wasn't much of it. 
That's they hilarious. They would have been so trolled. I, like, and it would have just, it just wouldn't have stopped. The only, I mean, the only bad part is like children watch the Super Bowl too. So yeah. you're just like, what a lot of questions on? after that. Yeah. Uh, that Dad. Super Bowl. Yeah. I like the description, <laughs> just full male nudity. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the dating apps. All right. Yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by Clorox. When accounts, trust Clorox. The same way we trust essential workers to provide the care they give to us, our families trust us to give them a safe and protected home. Our community heroes trust Clorox to keep places like hospitals and grocery stores disinfected. So I know I too can trust Clorox to provide my home with a safe environment at home we can all enjoy. That's why I trust Clorox Regular Bleach by mixing one-third cup of Clorox Regular Bleach with one gallon of water and used as directed on hard, non-porous surfaces. It kills 99.9% of germs and bacteria on a variety of surfaces, from our kitchen floors to the counters to the bathroom tubs and to, of course, the laundry whites. I know I can count on Clorox disinfecting products to give myself and my family the best home we deserve. Clorox disinfecting products are so important in my home, especially with my little puppy running around making a mess of it. So I make sure to use them on my floors, on my counters, on my door handles. And yeah, it's just keeping my home nice and clean because when it counts, trust Clorox. Feel good. All right, eating bananas can help fight depression. I need this actually. Bananas help overcome depression due to high levels of tryptophan, which is converted into serotonin, the happy mood brain neurotransmitter. I just I just heard actually because I was on a set once and there was like a guy in 80 on our set who was eating like three bananas. Like every time I'd see a day, like every time I'd see him, he's like eating a banana, eating a banana. And I was like, why are you eating so many bananas? Like that can't be good for you. And he's like, no, actually it's well, been sugar. prescribed because He's like, I have anxiety and apparently bananas also have like zinc or something. But like, so he's like, yeah, it's for my anxiety. I've been asked to have like at least up to three bananas a day. But like uh, bananas are my favorite fruit. So I love bananas. I could have them all the time. I love holistic medicine. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I have a banana it right is here. here. <laughs> to eat it. You want a, are you on a special That'll be the thumbnail. For- <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? <laughs> It's right here. Should I get it? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Okay. It's a banana. They a banana. Look a little, they look a little old. Oh. Like they're turning brown. That's when they're the best, though. That's but when that's the, aren't they the most make... sweet when they're brown. And isn't that when you're supposed to make stuff out of them because they're sweet? Yes. Yep. You need to make banana bread now. <laughs> that could be fun. I might spend the rest of my day doing that after this. I'm not even kidding. I can't no, wait. Seriously. Oh my god, I love banana bread. But are you, Miranda, are you on a special diet for like for COVID? Um, no, the doctor told me that if I ended up having any breathing problems or if it got worse, that I should call him. And he did say that there were different options of things, medication and things they can do. But I got lucky and I didn't have to ever do that. So I'm just yeah. eating kind of whatever. It's not, I'm probably not doing the best job. I should be eating <laughs> healthier. I've been eating a lot of... Um, Drinking a lot of peach snapple and eating a lot of cake. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's definitely not a COVID <laughs> helpful oh, diet. Comforting. Whatever where, that takes for quarantine, I guess. Where are your parents right now? I actually live with my parents normally, but I had to leave because I couldn't. They both tested after I found out that I tested positive, and they both tested negative, which was also really oh, great. Lucky. Um, so they're both doing really well, and um, they still have, don't have any symptoms. So I think they're going to be fine. And they didn't get it. Because um, I think 10 days is enough. I think that's about the amount of time um, mm-hmm. to know for sure. Yeah. But, but yeah, so I had to move out. It's kind of funny <laughs> because I should have already moved out a really long time ago, but this sort of has pushed <laughs> me. <laughs> like I should have moved out at like 18. I'm 27. <laughs> but so I had my own place. So I just went and actually, now I'm actually staying here. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Do, do they miss parents. you? Um, I think so. I mean, they're calling me a lot and checking in on me and stuff, but I feel like a little bit of them might be enjoying it. <laughs> Maybe yeah. a tiny bit, just because now they have like the house to themselves. And plus I have so many pets and my pets were with me at their house. So that's probably kind of nice for them to not have to worry about all that. But um, you have- I have two dogs. I have two pugs that I'm fostering and then I have 
a dog, and then I have three cats. So it's a lot. Fostering. Of <laughs> yeah. Fostering. Yeah. Yeah. She's <laughs> keeping them. But if <laughs> feel free to reach out to her. I don't think she's going to give them up, but I don't want to. have an application for the put, dogs, Yeah. Please. Give it your best shot. <laughs> so wait, when you guys say foster, because like, we don't, I don't know, like we don't really have like that, ter- not that term here, but like what, what do you guys mean like when you say you're fostering a, a pet? Is that like you're taking care of it in the meantime till the owners get back? Or um, it's more shelter? like, it's more like from a shelter or from a rescue. You could um, keep them for a while. Like a lot of people will foster puppies until they're like, maybe if their mom isn't around for some reason and they'll bottle feed them. And then when they're ready yeah. to get homes, they, they get homes. But I just found these two pugs randomly walking down the street. It sounds like a lie. Like I stole someone's pugs, but I really oh, just found them. That's what I um, think. they're so cute though oh my gosh like yeah the names are great too and you pick the names harold and mod (laughs) and mod (laughs) but doesn't it become really difficult if like you're you're fostering them, but then, like you've given them names or is that, is that fine? Cause then when they move to their next family, they'll have names that move with them. Um, well, I've only ever fostered one other dog that I um, found and they kept his name. So I don't know. Sometimes the people actually stick with the name, but, um, but yeah, there's a good chance they might change them too. I hope Harold and Maude stay the same. Oh, they, will. Got the to it. they will because <laughs> I don't think they're they'll never give them up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but still put in the applications guys Miranda Costco <laughs> <Please. laughs> IG finder and how do people how do how do you av- you work with an adoption agency or okay which one <laughs> an adoption agency it's getting so it's an open adoption I'm looking for <laughs> no way <laughs> I want I have to visit them I have to be a part of the people's lives as well they have to adopt me too She's not joking. <laughs> She's not joking. You're like, this is not a joke at all. <laughs> this is very <laughs> serious. I know. I'm kind of like confused here. I'm like, uh, what's going on? Right. No. Is so she being adopted? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But she, so she found strays, strays. And then, um, she brought them in her house and she's like, all right, I will take care of these two puppies until somebody decides they want to take them home and I'll give them a nice home in the meantime. So they don't have to be in some sort of place and kennels and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, or the streets. So she, or get killed in like a a shelter. I don't know. So she holds on to them (laughs) until somebody um, suitable reaches out to adopt these puppies. But and I say puppies, but I don't think they're puppies. <laughs> but <laughs> four. Yeah. Oh my god. But they're That's they're so the cutest nice dogs. <laughs> That's yeah. so nice of you, though. Seriously, like if you come to India, you're gonna have such a hard time because there's strays everywhere. Really? I mean, like, and like, oh my god, Amanda, mm-hmm. you know, like they're all. Over. It's crazy. I mean, it's just, it's not just dogs. It's like a lot of stuff. There's like monkeys. <laughs> monkeys. Yeah. So if I move to India, I'm going to have to open a farm. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 won't, you won't leave India. <laughs> yeah. You won't leave. Like yeah. I'll spend the rest just, of my life. Yeah. <laughs> like, where's Miranda? <laughs> I see you two together in India. And I'm like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so cute though. I mean, but even with COVID though, going back to that, it's just such an interesting topic because this is what everybody is scared of happening, you know, like, and, but you're living it, you're experiencing it. I had another friend, um, the mayor of Miami that had COVID too, and he felt fine. Like he had a similar situation, but I also had another friend that had it and he was a bit older and he was just suffering the whole time. He was like, it was like, an uphill battle every single day of my life. And I'm so happy I'm feeling better. And I'm so, I didn't think I was going to make it through it. So it's just crazy. The different experiences people have with it. Um, and some people get really lucky with like stronger immune systems and everything, or just in general, but it it sounds like a phantom thing if you've never had it. But then once you start hearing stories about people around you that have had it, you're like, Oh shit. 
Like this is reality. This is a real thing. This is happening. So I think it's so cool that you're willing to share your story about it. It makes people realize that is a real thing. You know, it's like if Miranda can get it, you can get it. So <laughs> be safe. Yeah. I know it's crazy oh, hearing the different levels of people having it too. Like I know somebody who is in such good shape and like 30 years old and he was in the hospital for a few days because he had fluid in his lungs. And then I have another friend who is like 25 who got it and she's like me. She didn't really have any symptoms except the no smell or taste, but it's so weird. She said it, it lasted for almost three months, um, not having her taste or smell, even though she was testing negative for COVID. Mm. So I guess sometimes that lasts a while for some reason, like different lengths of time. That sounds people. so terrible though. Um, Miranda, you're so lucky you're asymptomatic. Yeah. Like, I mean, well, I mean, Almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How, that's great. How does that work with, um, cause you film your show every week, right? For mission. Um, actually, no, we, um, we just film it a couple times a month. So we're probably, they aren't going to do it the next time around. And then I'm just going to keep testing. And I think you have to test, like you can't just test a uh, negative once because they do come up with, um, false negatives a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have to test multiple times once I test negative. Um, in order to be able to go back. But it was weird because when I saw the positive, I thought, well, maybe it's wrong. I don't know why. <laughs> my, my initial reaction was, it can't be right. I don't have it. You were, so, yeah. <laughs> so when I first saw it and I called the doctor, he was like, no. He was like, Fal the, like false positives are very rare, mm -hmm. but false negatives are kind of common, I guess. He was so like, and he <laughs> sort of explained it in a way that I kind of understood. He was saying that it's because whatever it is that they test for to figure out that you have COVID. Obviously, if it comes up negative, it's because they did, that wasn't there. But if it is there, obviously it's there. So you're positive. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not explaining it very well. No, no. I'm not good with science, no, but it yeah. sort of made sense to me when he was, when he was telling me why. It's crazy times, guys. It's crazy times. It Going back to um, Mission Unstoppable, because that's mainly what you're focusing on right now outside of COVID. And in doing that, that's hosting. And you've been acting your whole life. Was it a weird... Is that your first really hosting, like ongoing job that you've had since? Um, yeah, it is. It's actually... Um, I love reading a teleprompter because you don't have to memorize any lines or anything. So that's Less homework. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. and it's just a fun job because I get to learn about a lot of different people and uh, different jobs that I never knew existed in STEM. Um, like this season, we, uh, I didn't get to go, but um, they actually went and like interviewed a lady who um, she tags sharks. So all day long, every day, she just goes around in a boat in the ocean, putting tags on shark fins. And she wow. they have to figure out how to do it in a really fast way. Um, really careful way obviously to not get eaten <laughs> yeah um so it's just exciting and fun like getting to to hear about the different crazy things people do like i never even knew that was something somebody did so right um, yeah you, you don't really think about those things you just like know they have tags on them but <laughs> yeah how do they get, that? There? <laughs> yeah. get there and, um oh yeah and they're all, we're always just interviewing different people um they interviewed the lady that um runs the mars rover really yeah and um everybody just all the, the different women they interview they have really cool stories like um they all had people telling them like you're not going to make it or there's no way you're going to be able to do this like so yeah. many of them just believed in themselves and didn't really have anybody around them telling them that it was going to happen in any way like most of them had people kind of against them mm -hmm. so it's just inspiring, like hearing all their stories. It makes me feel like you can do anything. What What's one sure. of the like, I guess, out of all of your all of your experiences in in Hollywood and in business, what's one of the most important lessons you've learned? Um, well, just from auditioning from a really young age, I feel like that definitely um, it's hard because so many so much of acting is rejection, you know, like going on auditions and having people tell you no 99% of the time. So, mm -hmm. um, in a way it is kind of sad, but then it also, I feel like it makes you build up confidence in yourself. Like you have to believe in yourself when lots of people are telling you no. So yeah. I feel like, um, I don't know, that's kind of a good lesson to learn 
even though it, it can be hard when you're little, just because, um, you never, like, it's good to not give up obviously. And to know, um, just to really believe in yourself and, and not to listen to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So when, so, when you were a kid, like, did that affect you when you, when you'd get rejected at auditions? Um, like, I would think you, when I would was you cry? Really little, um, no, I never really got too upset because I sort of felt like I was always doing it like some little hobby on the side. Like my friends, when I was little, um, most of my friends would like, uh, have different sports they were in or they dance or something. So to me, it just kind of seemed like some like extra activity I was doing. Um, so no, I never, I don't think I really cried or got too upset, but, um, it's still hard when you're, you know, eight or nine or 10 and you're going into rooms and like trying to say the lines and do your best job. And it's just weird being in an audition room, even like, even now I don't, I feel weird sometimes in waiting rooms for auditions just because, you know, you're all going in on the same part and you all want the part and it's just kind of an awkward experience. Mm-hmm. Well, I, that's why I guys, love self tapes. Yeah, but yeah, do you guys talk to each other at auditions? Um, so yeah, do, I do always people... talk to people. Sometimes people seem like they don't like it when you talk to them, like they want to focus on the script. I don't know if yeah. like, you guys have ever been on an audition. Or Marina's like trying to make friends in the waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey. That's so cute. You're like, I was on Drake and, Drake and Josh. So. <laughs> Pictures of my past. <laughs> no, I, I remember when I was like, when I was 11 years old and I really wanted to start modeling and my sister was 14. So she was like, she started modeling at that time. And, um, I was 11 and because my sister started modeling, I was like, I have to be in this fashion show. And it was like her first fashion show. And I was like, I have to be in this fashion show. I have to be in this fashion show. And they're like, you cannot be in this fashion show. You're 11. <laughs> I was was so upset that day. I was just like, I was crying. And even when my sister left for the fashion show, I couldn't get over it. I was like, I can't believe I'm not in this fashion show. (laughs) I was really, really sad about that. And then eventually like, yeah. (laughs) You, Jacqueline just wants to be, as a child, I've learned she just wanted to be included. And like nobody would include her either. So why? (laughs) Why? 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 (laughs) <laughs> like you were the youngest sibling or child in your family. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So I had to be a part of everything. And when I wasn't, I was really, I, was, I, I would throw a fit. Right. <laughs> and then like I did a little bit, like then my modeling started like, I think 15, 16 onwards. So, but it was a struggle guys. It was a struggle. Like <laughs> <laughs> You made it though. 11, I was struggling. <laughs> Miranda, <laughs> you, go, you go to India all you see is Jacqueline's face all over <laughs> billboards everywhere. Really? Yeah. I go there and I'm like, holy, oh, there she is again. <laughs> there she is again. And I'm like, oh my best. God. It's, it's so awesome. You have like somebody, they'll have to see you everywhere all the time. That's like the ultimate revenge. Yeah, <laughs> oh it God. really is. <laughs> they can't like, get like, away. Yeah. <laughs> I think like that's like that's like thing like even if you date someone famous like you do it's, see like, it's just Jacqueline billboard. looking looking yeah. <laughs> and looking really pretty they're like really nice pictures too it's not like when a bad picture comes up on like Instagram uh, yeah. that your friend that would suck. don't like <laughs> that would suck if like I had a billboard and it was like the worst picture <laughs> you know what happened to me before um with one of my friends like we were shooting photos together and she's like, Oh, okay. Make sure you edit it and do this and do this. Cause I'm like, okay, I got you. And then I did it. I post the picture and then she posts the same picture, but the unedited one. And then, what? yeah. So it looks like I edited her. Like you're oh, mean. Oh. And you didn't think she looked good enough. Yeah. I'm like, Thank you, you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, I, and I, you know what? I'll t- okay. Uh, yes, I did it. A, yeah. <laughs> sure. It was all me. I wanted to take the extra 30 minutes of my time perfecting the notes I was given. Like, oh, did she explain why she did. <laughs> I didn't, I never even asked, but I oh will, God. I will bring it up though. I'll call her out <laughs> because I need answers. I, I do need answers. I, I don't know if it's sabotage, Wait, Amanda, which has happened before. Your, why don't you have your 626 on you right now? Because it's morning time, Jacqueline, <laughs> for me today. 
And I'm well, trying not to be yeah, <laughs> always drunk. <laughs> no, I um, actually, no, I would drink wine in the morning, honestly. I, I think I like wine. More 66, yeah. <laughs> 66wine.com. Um, Wait, Miranda, have you tried her wine yet? I have, and you know what's funny? I had only ever tried wine maybe one or two other times in my life, and the most wine I've ever had was Amanda's wine. <laughs> it's literally the most. I had an entire glass. So, yeah. Whoa, it's very good. <laughs> That's so wait, how you what? know it's good. it's good. Wow, an entire glass? You would not go beyond an entire glass. <laughs> the most I've ever had. Maybe I will next time. I'll keep taking it to new heights. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Quarantine's about to get real fun for Miranda. So, <laughs> um, But we do have some final questions from fans that we want to ask you before we sign off today so you can rest up some more. And yeah, start baking some more bananas. bananas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, our first question is, what was it like working on iCarly? You must get this. Um, <laughs> and how old were you? How old were you when you were filming that? Um, I started filming that show when I was 13. And um, I think it ended when I was, I think I turned 20 like a couple months after it ended. Mm -hmm. So all my high school years were on the show. And um, it was actually really, I had a, mostly 99% a really fun time doing it. It sort of was like high school, I think, in some ways, even though I did homeschooling to do the show, just because um, we always had different guest stars on and, like, cute guys and stuff. And, um, <laughs> like, we were always, like, me and Jeanette, who was on um, the show with me, we were always, like, sometimes we'd like the same guy or sometimes, like, I don't know, I just feel like oh. we went through some of the high school stuff um, doing oh the show, God. so... Cool. Um, I definitely have a lot of crazy memories from that. Oh, and it was fun getting to travel for the show because I had never really traveled before at all. So um, just to get to go to different countries and meet people and we got to do like signings and things like that. So um, yeah, it was definitely a, a cool experience. <laughs> Yay, I love that. Yeah. The next question is, who is your closest friend and where did you meet? Um, one of my best friends and my oldest friend was my next door neighbor my entire childhood. Her name's Nina. Hi, Nina. <laughs> um, and yeah, we, it's actually crazy. Her dog just had its night. I take everything back to animals, but her dog just had its 19th birthday. And when she moved in next door to me, when we were eight, she got the dog. So, um, it's just crazy to her dogs have the, like all her animals live the longest of anyone I know. She needs and, to start a um, blog. About. Yeah, I always ask her, what do you feed them? I want to copy everything she does. But yeah. Um, yeah, she's pretty much, she's my best friend. She's um, in, she's like a realtor, so she um, isn't in the entertainment business at all. And um, yeah, she's the best. I had a dog that lived to 19 as well. Really? What dog. kind of dog was it? What breed? It was, it was a Pom. Oh, how cute. Yeah. And like, we got, her, we got her when I was a year old. And then, like, like literally, she was there till I was like twenty. So, like, I, I, I grew up with her, you know. And um, she was really fat. Like, she ate everything, everything, because we were four kids. So we would always like give her like our food. Like, whenever we were eating, she'd eat our chocolates. She, she drank co like Pepsi and Coke, and, like fizzy drinks, like everything. Like, she was addicted to that stuff. And then she would, and then like even if we were chewing gum, she would want our gum. So then we'd like, okay, and we'd give her our chewing gum, and she would eat the chewing gum. She'd like gobble it up. And, and then she, she lived in 19. <laughs> and she lived in 19. She got really obese and then we had to put her on a diet. And then, um, and then, but she still lived to 19. Actually, like she, she got really old. I think she would have lived for longer, but we had to put her down because she was that old. Oh, like she was like, she couldn't see anymore. And she couldn't like, she was like barking at walls and like sitting in her poop. And then we're like, you know what? It's just, she's just too old right now. And like, it was like, we kind of oh. felt like, was, I know it was terrible. It was terrible. It was like the but hardest thing. That's a really thing impressive ever. life. That's a lot. Yeah. My friend's dog barks at walls too. And the vet thinks that she has um, dementia. And I yeah. didn't know that dogs could even get that. Yeah. yeah. 19 is terribly old for a dog. Like it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's old. trucking along. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's crazy. Jacqueline, you don't write a blog about how your dog lived to 19. I think you got lucky. Um, <laughs> Miranda, your friend should write a blog. No, but thank you so much, Miranda, for being on today. Thank you, Miranda. It was so lovely to speak to you. Yeah, it was great to meet you. And this was the most fun part of my week. Thank Yay. you. Yay. <laughs> awesome. and, um, and thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you catch our episodes every Tuesday. Tuesday. You know where to find us. And thank you so much. We love you and we'll see you next week.